And it's a quiet, it's a very quiet thing that these meters are still serviceable, still operational, and still in service in many cases. Hello and welcome back to Prepping 101 on Guns America. I'd like to review the civil defense meters that you see on eBay that are mostly from the 60s and 1970s. You'll find that some of them, they have actually been in service for quite some time. And they were, this, this meter for instance, this was serviced in 2002 by the Nebraska Emergency Management Calibration Service. They're one of the few that existed then, and I only know of one now, which I will link to in the companion article, that services these meters and actually has the, the original government calibration system that uses a rock of, of cesium-137 uh, in it to calibrate these meters. The meters on the side, you'll see that they have, they have a, a calibration adjustment for each of the bands and most likely your meter will have a mark where the original calibration was set and your current calibration may be close to that it may be off that it depends because this is an ion chamber and the ion chamber obviously is going to change with age so that's the that's the, what the guts of a cdv meter cdv meter looks like the the face of it itself has has this dial and they take a D battery so off is off uh, you turn the circuit check just to make sure that it's working and then it goes up into the circuit check zone the zero is extremely sensitive and you adjust your zero just by by kind of bobbing the see you just kind of bob it in there bob it into zero and you'll see when I go into the point one setting that it doesn't really have any effect on it because um, that's the way this works is you have X 100 um, one, um, 10 times it's 100 times 10 times and one time so this is in rads per hour it is not based on the sieverts system the the real radiation measurement people out there they all go by Rotengens. They don't go by Sieverts. Sieverts is a new, a newer term that is meant to reflect the actual absorption of radiation in a body. And Sieverts are not exactly parallel 100 times the, the, the rads or 100, 100th of the rads, but they are related um, depending on what material it is if the radiation is penetrating. So this is a CDV 715 and it sits right in its case here you see I've got a, a fresh calibration certificate from 2014 this is the the company that this is the current company that that services them rad meters for you Shane Connor is the owner I've spoken with him several times mostly via email this is the other one the CDV 717 this has a remote sensor capability. You'll see I have it plugged in here so that you can take your ion chamber and put it outside your shelter. Um, these are the only real high level meters that you can buy. I am testing a Russian one that has two different types of, of regular um, GM tubes in them, a high level and a low level. But these are the, these are the, the, the only cheap reliable meters out there for high level radiation. The only thing is, they don't work for low-level radiation at all, and even high-level, low-level radiation. This, for instance, this is my inspector alert, which you guys have seen me use in some of my other articles and videos. And you can see, I've got a radiation source over here, so it's near it, so it's, so it's, it's, it's clicking. But if I put this upside down on the pancake filter, there's a... There's some cesium in here, there's some strontium, there's some cobalt, there's some polonium. It's, uh, it, these are, these are uh, lab samples. You can actually buy them yourself from Spectrum Techniques. Um, they're expensive, but they're not, it's not like there's a 
you, you don't have to fill out a federal form or something because there's only a little tiny piece of stuff in there. But as you can see, it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't play around. When it comes to this level, this meter, and it will actually blank out this meter. Even one of these will blank out this meter. This meter dies. So that's true of all those low level meters. They, they can't handle a nuclear event. They can't even handle these little guys. So let me just show you the, the high level meters. The high level meters are the absolute opposite. They are not even affected by these little guys. That's the kind of radiation that they're built to, to, to measure for you. Just how much is coming down in a true nuclear fallout situation. That's why you have to have one of these. So I'll turn this off. This is the 717. I will zero it. Get the radiation away from the from the chamber. And then I'm going to turn it all the way to point 1. Now you're going to see it jump a little bit on point 1 because obviously when you're zeroing it, you're zeroing it at 1 and you can't really fine tune the zero. So it's settled in there around uh, 0.6, okay? When I have it on the 0.1, it's 0.6, so it would be 0.06 uh, rads per hour, um, according to this meter. So now I'm going to put this whole can thing, not just one of these, but the whole thing on there. All right, and see what happens. Nothing. You see? It, it's settled the same thing. It's settled in at 0 0.6, 6 and a half. Take it away. No bounce. Put it back. No bounce. And that is right on top of the ion chamber. I'll put it on the bottom of the ion chamber just in case you're curious. Same thing. Nothing going on. So that it's really important to understand why you need one of these because this radiation won't hurt you. I can carry this in my shirt pocket for a year and it's not going to hurt me. But it still lights up this low level meter like there's a nuclear bomb just went out of outside. That's the that's what to understand about them. I'll do the same thing on the on the 715. I'll take this out of its can and I'll I'll let me zero it first. It's on zero now, so I'll I'll zero it. Put my radiation away. Okay. Get her get her to zero there. Okay. Now I'm gonna crank it up to 0.1. Okay, I actually didn't get a bounce on that one, so my zero was closer to zero. So now I will put it down directly on my radiation. Uh, you see, maybe I should have put it down on there. Yeah, this meter is not, even though this meter was recently calibrated, I've found it on the point one it doesn't it's just it's impossible to get it to to behave just show you just so, just so you I don't I don't edit this stuff out just so you guys can see that nothing is ever goes the way you think it's gonna go <laughs> and nothing is ever exactly what you think it's gonna do I've actually had this bounce putting it down before and I said whoa it does react and then I tried it a couple more times and it didn't react so we might as well do the same thing again. I will re-zero this. Okay. This time I'll put it down on top of the I'll put it down flat. Because I, I know that's what that's what did that. So when I put it down flat, see I can jiggle this and it's get it to bounce a little bit. See it's it's bouncing. See how it moves? It's because for high level radiation, it's actually fairly sensitive. But the ion chamber, see, back and forth, it's doing its, see, it's as I put it down, it's bouncing a little bit. So now that it's, it's settled in, I will put this back under it. Let's see what happens. It's saying nothing. So I got all excited before because the similar experience happened to me. But as you can see, it really doesn't, really doesn't matter. Um, this is a, a, a good deal of radiation for non-nuclear event and it's just not even registering. So that's the CDV 715 
the CDD717. And again, these actually were bought on eBay, oh, maybe, maybe a year ago. And they were 35, th these actually had these calibration stickers on them. And they were 35 bucks or so. And perfect condition. They were, they had been in, in service. And according to Shane, these are in service still all over the country. There are first responders who have them in their ambulances and it's a quiet, it's a very quiet thing that these meters are still serviceable, still operational and still in service in many cases. So go out and get yourself a civil defense meter. CDV 15, CDV 17 with a remote sensor. The CDV 700, I will mention, is a regular Geiger counter, a regular low-level Geiger counter like you would use on food like this one. Like you would, you would put over something that you want to test to see if it was contaminated with radioactive particles after a nuclear event. These are right after a nuclear event, within that first 48 hours to two weeks when the radiation is actually is, is, is reducing itself very greatly, but there's still going to be hot spots, there's still going to be fallout. If it's a nuclear power plant or several nuclear power plants, there's going to be a lot of them at one time. So go get yourself a meter, CDV 715, CDV 717. They are on eBay all the time, 25 bucks to 200 bucks. Good luck. We'll see you next time.